So today we're gonna dive into what disrespecting and maybe dishonoring our husbands could look like. Um, we were just talking about it and I, I wasn't aware, right? I didn't know how important my comments were, how much my words struck my husband and how demeaning I really could be until it was brought to my awareness. And so this kind of goes along the lines of being his biggest cheerleader. Like your husband might say, yeah, I know my wife loves me, but does she like me? Right? Like, yeah, I know she loves me, but does she like me? So, I mean, if you check in with yourself, like, would your husband say, yeah, my wife loves me, but I don't know if she likes me, right? Someday she, like, I know when she disapproves of me. Um, and so with me, I have Christy, um, and Christy has been with us in the Rise Up Queens program and is now a Rise Up Queens coach. And we were just, we just want to banter back and forth with like dishonoring and disrespect and what that could look like. And so as you watch, I want you to just check in with you, huh? Are there ways that I've been being that just, I've been unaware to the fact, or maybe you know that you do it, just unaware that I could be dishonoring my husband. Like what comes to mind for you when we think about that? Um, I think one thing that comes to mind that I would you're just totally unaware of until it's brought to your attention is your facial expressions, your body language, <laughs> your um, mm -hmm. things that, I mean, it's not even words you're saying necessarily. A lot of times when you think of disrespect, you think of actually vocalizing and saying something disrespectful, but mm -hmm. my face and my body language and especially my eyes can tell a story that I don't even have to say words. That's so true, right? And like just the look, right? Your husband like knows. And so that's like the great, that is great, right? Because the look, because who else do we give the look to? We give the look to our kids, right? Right. And our kids, like that's appropriate for them so that they know, hey, like this is who's boss. But imagine like you give a similar type look to your husband, who's your partner, who's supposed right. to be the spiritual leader and the leader of your home. And you're giving that look like, I mean, and, and maybe he doesn't say anything, right? And he just takes it and kind of goes inward and withdraws, but it's creating disconnection in, yeah, in absolutely. marriages. I feel like for me, it really showed up in our business when Skylar would have a business idea because he's visionary, he's go get it. He's like, let's plan all this stuff, like big picture. And I was always the one that was like, no, what right. about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And so he would come to me with this joy and excitement and I could kill it within a matter of minutes right. through my questioning, which is a great skill and it serves us in business, but I had to learn when to use that ability and when to not use it, right? And right. Like they come to us with a great big idea and they're so excited and my first thing is the same way. Great, that's nice. How are you gonna do it? Mm. What about this? What about the budget? What about who's gonna do this or that? And instantly they hear, you can't do it. You're not capable. Mm. I don't believe in you. Mm. Like mm -hmm. we communicate those things without ever even saying it. Mm -hmm. And so like, does your husband get the feeling that you are his biggest cheerleader? That you're like, yes, like, you're in, in the back of your mind, like lots of details need to happen. And, and, and it, even if you're not in business together, this could be like, I'm going to go lose weight or I'm going right. to go do anything. Right. And he has all of his own insecurities and things that he brings to whatever venture he's going to do. And do you add to those in a negative way or are you uplifting in a positive way? Tell me right. about, you were talking about, um, when you first became aware that this might be part of the way you operate in your marriage. Right. Well, it almost sounds silly to say I was completely unaware, but I was. Um, we were on like a weekend trip with several couple of friends of ours, and one of the couples that was with us was someone that I put in the position in my life to be a mentor. Like, she spoke into my life very directly sometimes. And we were all sitting around a campfire, several couples, and she's like, hey, Christy, I need to go to the bathroom. Will you walk with me to our cabin? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, she just wants me to walk to the cabin. Like, I feel honored. She's like the headship of this whole group of people. So I walked to, the ba to her cabin with her, and I'm sitting in the living room in this little chair waiting for her to come out of the bathroom. And she comes out, and she sits down on a stool right in front of me and knee to knee. And she tells me, Christy, quit correcting BJ in front of people. And I just remember like my eyes started burning and tears started welling up in my eyes and I'm like, do I do that? Mm. I was completely unaware. Like, and apparently I had just been doing it while we were sitting out there around this campfire with all these other couples. And she's like, yes, you do. Mm. Stop doing that. <laughs> mm. That was like the first like, you know, peeling back of the layers over my eyes. That, oh my gosh, like I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. 
It's interesting because I remember thinking when I used to do that, but it, and it came from this, almost this, I don't know about you, but it came from this insecurity in me mm -hmm. of like, I want them to see him as this. And so if he misses a detail or says things off or doesn't say it the right way, I mean, not even that the people that we're with know that it's wrong, but I know. So I'm like, okay, well, right. we need to correct this and right. I need to just jump in and, oh, that wasn't five years ago. That was four, you know. It's like, funny that you say that because that was literally one of the things she said to me. She's like, if he misses a detail, don't correct him in front of everyone. Like if you feel like you need to go back later and say, hey, why did you say it was four years ago when it was five years ago? Or why did you say it was $100, it was 200? Whatever the story is. Mm -hmm. She's like, what's the point of doing that in front of people? Like if you need to address those things, which really you don't most of the time, but mm -hmm. save it until later. Mm -hmm. Another thing that can be really demeaning, and this can go both ways, but um, is kind of thinking that you know better than they do right? I, we, we were talking about that, like, that you know their thoughts better, that you know what they want better, like, and they'll say, like, I, and it, this comes up between Skylar to me even, he'll say, well, I know that you're going to be like this, and I'm like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. don't put me in that box, like, yes, I may have responded in that way before, but, like, as my spouse, I want you to, like, set the stage for where I can come to, like, sh like speak into the person that I'm becoming, stop defining me by my past. Do you have any experience in Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, just in, you said, we know their thoughts better than they do. And I'm, it's hard for me to come up with a specific example, but I just know that that's one of the things for years. Like BJ would share his thought about something and I'm like, no, that's not how you feel about that. This is how you feel about <laughs> that. Like, what, where do I get that from? Why do I think I know his thoughts better than he does? Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you said, like, it comes from a place of insecurity. Like that's next level, like, digging deeper to mm -hmm. figure that out mm -hmm. because a year ago or two years ago I would have told you no it doesn't it's because he's wrong and I know better yeah but now I'm in a place where I'm like oh it totally does come from a place of insecurity like I want me to look good because of him mm -hmm. it's interesting for me that brings up just this like self-righteousness that's in me that mm -hmm. like I'm right I know best and my way is the best way and like as if he like didn't survive on his own before we met right <laughs> like oh no you need to wear this color um like aren't you supposed to be eating that like i become his second mother and we've talked in other videos that like men are not attracted to their mothers like right. intimately and sexually and so sometimes we wonder like if your husband is withdrawing or isn't coming out and like sharing vulnerably that might be partly his side but if he's withdrawing if he's sedating with video games if he wants to not come home if he's overworking yes it's a two-part way but like could you be contributing to that problem when he comes to you are you willing um john gottman talks about bids like our spouses come and say oh look at this or oh i like this or oh this and are you constantly shooting him down when mm -hmm. he's coming to you because it'll cause disconnection and it's interesting because skylar shared some really hard things over the years and things that my brain wants to say like no, this is danger, retreat, like he's going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. But just in him sharing it, that is him choosing to move closer to me. So am I even recognizing the moments that he's trying, even if he's admitted something, if he's confessing something, do I recognize those moments where he's trying to lean into me? And do I lean in with him or do I just attack him like while he's down? I still struggle. Like we were talking about like porn and like looking at images that are inappropriate, like recently and He's like honestly saying, this is what's going on. Like, pray for me. Like, right. I don't want this. And I like went in and attacked and just totally dehumanized him and like made him bad for it. Even though like I'm a sinner in the relationship also. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Any oh. thoughts? What's coming up? Or what stuck out? Ooh. Just when you're talking about how they'll br they bring things to you, like just literally yesterday, like BJ texted me something that was vulnerable for him to share. And like, my instant thought is to be like, well, are you a fake? Are you a fraud? Are you doing this or that? Instead of like, man, he just totally opened up by sending that text message. Like that was a vulnerability for him to just share that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're watching this, it's like, have you completely shut that down in your spouse? I, I think that men learn to not talk about sex with us 
from us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, because it, for some reason that's really triggering for me. And if there's been um, like cheating in the relationship, like in our relationship, there was cheating. And so like anything around sexual, anything was very triggering for me. But I'm like, man, like I one day hope and pray that I can become the wife, that I am the safe space, right? That he can literally come as he is and that I can accept it and not make it about me. Like I was just talking about how I'm so good about making it about me, everything about me, like what I want, what I think he should do, what I this, what like, oh, that was about me. Like when like they, like our spouses have their own problems. Like do you, the only way I can be his biggest cheerleader is if I give him space to be human and space to do, have challenges. And like, how do I meet him in that? Do I take him down or do I lift him up? Mm -hmm. You said the word uh, dehumanize and like, you put that word to my thoughts for a long time. I was like, man, I realized like BJ and I've been together since we were 16 years old. Like when you talk about being someone's mom, like we met at a very young age. So even more so, I feel like for us, that was just natural. Like I came in and told him what to do. Like we were 16 when we met. I helped raise him, yeah. you know? So like over the last year or so, like eh, maybe a couple of years, because I kind of started this journey before I came into Rise Up Queens, just next level now, you know, but um, just realize how much I did dehumanize him. Like, he would reach out, and he would say, it hurts me when you talk to me like this. Mm. Like, it's not the things you're saying, it's the tone in which you say it. And I was like, get, like, basically get over it. Quit being a baby, toughen up, you should be able to take it, you know, like, he was telling me, and I just didn't hear it. Mm. He just wasn't I, he wasn't human. Like, mm. it's sad. It's weird. Like, how does that even happen? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, for me, like it happened just through the way that I felt I was going to get love was through perfection. Right. And so through me, I mean, cause the standard was on myself too. Mm -hmm. Like I not only required, expected him to be perfect. Like I wanted me to be perfect. So mm -hmm. like I imposed my standards on him and it makes me think my ex-husband before we got divorced, he was like, I was never good enough for you anyways. Mm. That was his like. <laughs> but it was so true. It was yeah. so true. I, it, what, how we started in the beginning. It was the looks that I would give him, the tone that I would have, the things that I would say. I was definitely his biggest critic. So I'd love for you to check in in your life. Um, how are you uplifting your spouse? Like, are you their biggest critic? Like, do you see, do you hear what they're saying when they say like, oh my gosh, that hurt that, or they, that hurt my feelings. And maybe they don't even say that hurt my feelings. They just withdraw or they're perpetually angry, mm -hmm. right? It takes two sides in a relationship, but like really it takes one person to shift the relationship. So if you are watching, like I'm talking to you, like what is your side, regardless of what your spouse does, regardless of how they react, regardless of what they said or how they respond, like how are you choosing to act in the relationship? And can you do a better job at being their biggest cheerleader? If you can, definitely comment below. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button because there's more great topics on intimacy and connection and marriage.